what I wanted to do today is work out a little more systematically what I got into at the end of last time. Now, I went over some of the things maybe a little too quickly and um, didn't show more exactly what might follow. It turned out it was really kind of interesting. So I said, Dan, you, you'll do it in the problem set. Well, there'll be stuff left. I'll leave you one good question for the problem session tomorrow, but we'll come to it a little bit later. Um, and remember what we were doing, we were saying, well, you know, if parents can't leave debt, and if they're old age, at, at old age, they want really to consume more and give other children have less, they, they can't do it by debt. So they, they, they can't do it by debt. I mean, they could cut their investment in human capital. Um, but remember, as long as they care about children, every time they do something like that, they hurt the children. And that hurts them. They may, you know, they may net benefit to go to some optimal investment. Okay. But not generally, as we show, the rate of investment that will equalize the margin utility they get when they're old. I mean, the condition that they would like to be in, if they could, would be U prime C old is equal to A B prime of child, right? That's a good condition they'd like to be in. The left hand side is their margin utility when they're old from additional consumption, and the right hand side is the margin utility they get from additional consumption of their children. Think of V maybe as a utility function of the children, and A the discount, I mean, it could, it could be greater than one. For everything we've done so far, it could be greater than one. I'll call it the discount applied to that marginal utility, okay? And then I said, well, but suppose the parents could affect the preferences of children. And I used, I said, suppose they could make the children guilty, and that guilt would lead them to want to increase the support of parents, then they may pay for the parents to do that, even if the kids end up with lower utility. And that all that is right. But I want to show, go a little, and I worked out a few things. I want to go further by dealing with a more simplified version of the problem. Um, and by making it simple, we can actually derive stronger, stronger uh, results. Uh, for example, in the simplified version, we'll be able to show that the investment in children will increase if parents do this, but they'll net won't increase to make it the optimal amount of investing in kids. Never go that far. Um, and I won't show this, but I'll give you an example. This is what Dan will have to show. But I, 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 mean, I think it has to be done through particular cases. That by doing this, the parents can make the children better off as well as themselves better off. It could be parade or group. That's a little counter. I haven't proven it, but I'm pretty sure as I work through it that you can do it. Uh, all right, so what am, what am I going to do? Well, again, I'm going to assume that in middle age, the parents spend the amount of Z. Z expenditures of quantities to influence children's giving. They do that at middle age, when it's parents at middle age. So you influence the children when they're young, that's when they're more, more malleable, so that you affect what they want to do when they're old. So since it's coming at middle age, we would say the constraint at middle age would be CM plus Y of C plus Z of C plus K don't you be equal E of P minus, I'll, talk, I'll tell you what that is in a moment. Okay. All right, now, how does Z affect? Well, as before, or I made it a little more complicated before, what I'm going to assume is that there is a function S for support of Z such that S prime is greater than zero. So when parents 
spend more on influencing children's preferences, children contribute more. So this term here will be how much parents are contributing to their parents. I'm not going to, that's part of the maximization. I'm, I'm going to not deal with that at this point. Okay. It would be part of the maximization of the parents. Okay. All right. So now how does S operate? This is where I'm going to make a simplified assumption. I'm assuming the way S operates is if you look at V, V of C, that's going to be equal to E of C minus S of Z. Okay? So it's got, the amount they give is going to be a subtraction from their wealth, and where this thing operates from, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to have it entering anything. I'm just going to see it operates automatically. It could be it operates through the guilt of children. You have to have a guilt variable in this V function that lowers children's utility. It could be it operates the altruism of children. Maybe altruism maybe has a positive effect on children's utility. Or could that be some other way? So I'm going to eliminate all that because it, we don't have to worry about other variables in the utility function. That's what makes it much simpler. Just assume it operates somehow. Uh, children have that preference. It's in their preferences. Uh, they're not forced to do it. So it's hardwired into their preferences. Okay. Yes. So SOP is the support that the parents get from their parents, or the support that the children get the, from their parents. S of S of C is the amount that the children of these parents give to these parents when they're old, and I'll show you that in a moment. So if we will now write down the consumption of children, of parents when they're old, it would be C of O, okay, plus any bequests they give to their children, B of C, plus, so, spend it on one of these two ways, and they get RKK plus S. C of Z. Okay, we call that C2. Okay? So this is the budget constraint of parents. Okay? So it's clear, just writing this down, if B equals, if B is positive, if B is positive, leave. See here? No? Okay, yeah, good question. Juan, uh, Juan. H Y U N. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. So let me repeat the question. Uh, if I can even remember it now, let me see. What was the question? <laughs> oh yeah. If, if this is positive, that is positive. Now in that case, what do we know about Z? That it's uh, Why? Yeah, because it'd be inefficient to do it. You're going to give them money, and you're going to spend money, Z, to get money back from them. Right? Why not give them less? Right? Give them less. So, B is going to be Z. If, if, if then, to deal with the case where B is zero. Okay. Parents don't want to leave any requests to their, to their kids. Okay, that's the case we dealt with. That's the case we started with. Okay. So 
Uh, so this is going to be zero here. Okay. So when parents optimize, you might say it's going to be an equality for B. We'll use that inequality, which will say that the margin utility they get from uh, from leaving making B positive is less than the cost. The cost would be like C prime at, at old age, right? It would be the marginal utility they're giving us. Okay. So combining these two constraints, we then met the constraint that we had before, that CM of we won plus yc plus z of c. Now we can substitute in for k, right? So k, we know what that's equal to. That's c naught over rk. I'll, I'll write it down here, but d rk, right? Minus s of c or z of c over rk, right? And that's going to be equal Let's uncall that E P oh, minus S P. Okay. So this is a constraint that parents have. Or, or if you want to put it differently, you can bring this over to no oh, wait. This is, yeah, no, this is okay. Oh, yeah. Bring it over to the other side and S or C then becomes part of the, a discounted S to C becomes part of the resources of parents, right? So if they know they're going to get S to C in the future, they discount that back, and that will affect their optimization. But at the same time, they're optimizing over S to C. So it's like anything else. Right, so what happens? Okay. Well, C M and C naught, we get the usual first order conditions. Let me write them down, but I'll use them later. We get C prime, U prime, CM is equal to theta, RK, U prime, C. Basic condition. Okay, that way out. Let me hold one for Y, same as we had before. Y is going to be positive, right? We assume you're not at a corner with Y, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, out of the corner with water. All right. So now, what's the first order condition? Yeah. I have another question. I might be confused, but the way we've written the combined budget constraint, it, look, it seems that the parents have access to this future support of the children today. Is that well, they have a discounted value. Uh, like today, they can have it, you know, because they can lower their capital stock. I mean, as long as they're not on the corner, they can, if, if they don't um, get a big gift later on, they may cut K down to zero or, or to, you know, reduce K. Yes, so we're assuming that they can make that trade-off. That's all. I mean, that, 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 I mean well, let's, say Z, let's say S wasn't there before. What, what's, what's the justification of combining these two constraints? The justification was, well, you could, how, how, how can you combine them? You can combine them as long as Either K is positive or K could be negative, and, you, and you're paying that back out of your present value of resources. So think of it exactly the same way now, right? Parents know this. The lender knows this. You can borrow, get negative K, and you pay them back later on, so they know what your S is going to do. That's the way to think about it. So we're not, I mean, we're not, K could be negative in principle, right? Won't be in, in general, but you're getting a lot from your kids, it could be negative. Could be. You weren't getting anything from your kids before, and then we knew it had to be positive. But before, the only way you could consume an old age was to have a positive K. Right. Now that's not necessarily true. Okay. Now we'll be also able to give a result on the rate of return on Z versus K. Let's think about that as we go through it. Should be clear. Uh, let me ask you. Um, Timothy Couch. Yeah. That's you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll keep with you. Right. Don't ask questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sorry, what's the but the question? question is in equilibrium, what's going to be the relationship between the rate of return? On, think of this. Yeah. Uh, maybe. A, not clear yet. Think of S, S prime is really R of Z. But S prime 
comes out. I'm spending a certain amount Z when I'm middle age. I'm getting a certain amount back when I'm old age, right? And so S gives the amount I'm getting back per dollar spent on, on Z, right? So that's the rate of return. How does that term compare with the rate of return on physical capital? I guess once they optimize, it should be the same. Why? Because they could, I mean, they could either invest in capital and get money Future, or they could induce guilt in their child. To no guilt in this. They just get. Or in buy Sorry. All right. Yeah. But are they equally? Are, are they equally efficient? Oh, actually, it seems that the um, buying Z is kind of inefficient because they both have to pay for it directly, and it costs in terms of their child's utility. Yeah. You're right. So they so pay. Z is not an efficient way to do it. If you could avoid it, you'd like to avoid it. So we would predict that the in equilibrium, the rate of return on Z is going to be greater than that on K. Otherwise, you don't do it. Right. Okay. So let's bear that in mind, because that's what we will be able to show. All right. So now we look at the first order condition for Z. So the first order condition for Z, so let me write down, I didn't write this down yet, let me write down, it is the utility function we have, I should have done that before this, but it's the same as we've been dealing with. rewrite this, maybe a little more illuminating, we would get, now let's carry this down, we would get pi times, I'm going to call this Rz, S prime, divided by Rk, minus 1, is less than or equal to beta A B prime of C or that. Okay? That's the condition we have. So if you ask, what's the cost? What's the cost of doing this? The cost is that the kids lose the utility. Right? This, this is what the kids are losing for any uh, additional in expenditure on C. Kids lose utility. Why? Because the kid's utility is negatively related to Z. Increase Z, you raise S, and you lower the kid's utility. Right? So that's the cost. Yeah, so there's a cost to the parent. They care about their kids. So if I'm if I'm if I'm spending more and making you give me something, you'll get you're losing resources. Okay, so that's the cost. What's the benefit? Well, the benefit has to do with the value to me of having consumption when I'm older, that's going to be determined by this term here. <coughs> we know what that is. I mean, that, that 
term there, you know, is simply, this is lambda, right? Marginal utility of consumption, middle age, right? And the, how big the rate of return on Z is relative to K. This term here is positive, right? If Rz was equal to Rk, your condition, right? This is zero, this is positive, and this is less than. So Rz equal Rk implies Z star equal to zero. Got that right away. For the reasons we, we went through, right? It's, it's a costly way to invest. Capital is a cheaper way to invest. Capital, you spend a dollar on capital, you get RK. Uh, Z, you spend a dollar on Z, you get RZ. That's good, right? So if they're equal, you get the same amount. But the kids are worse off when you do it that way. The kids are worse off. And so you know, in order for Z to be positive, therefore, a necessary condition, not sufficient, but necessary condition, Z prime greater than zero only if RZ is greater than RK. Okay. So this is, RZ is greater than RK, this is greater than one, positive, and therefore it's possible for this to hold. <coughs> I couldn't hear what you said. K? K? It's a decision barrier, <coughs> or is something that is fixed for the parents? They choose the K? amount of capital? K yeah. is chosen. Okay. Yeah, we went through that last time, or yeah. the time Because before. if it's chosen, I, I don't see how could it be that they would choose like any positive C, right? Like Any positive what? Z? C. All right, because there's a higher rate of return. RZ is greater than R, uh, RK. That's the only way they would, might do it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's why, that's how we worked out this, and that's, that's the intuition behind why a necessary condition is Rz is, is high. If Rz wasn't high, that is, that is a minimum higher than Rk, you would never do it. Because yeah. it's costly. So that's precisely the, the logic that leads to this condition. It's precisely the logic that leads to that condition. Okay. You don't want to do it unless you're getting a high enough rate of return to justify doing it. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. That's good. Now, there's one other condition. So we take this condition here. <clears throat> this condition says, okay, just rewriting it, pi over rk is less than or equal to pi plus beta a v prime c r z. Right. That's uh, just rewriting that condition. We know that Rz is greater than Rk. We've already shown that if we're going to get positive um, amount of Z. Now we look at, yeah, here's, here's what we want to do. Look at the first order condition for CO. First order condition for CO is up there. We can say that pi over rk okay, is equal to beta u prime co, right? So we can write this, beta times u prime co, right? Let me make a mistake there. Yeah, that's right. Beta u prime co is less than or equal to pi 
plus beta A U prime C by Z. Okay? Alright. Now Z was suppose Z was positive. Yeah. Isn't there supposed to be an RZ next to lambda on the left hand side of the inequality? Yeah. Lambda R Z over R K? glad you pointed that out because otherwise we'd be in trouble. That's exactly uh, what we should have. Yeah, let's go, let's go back to this equation, okay? Let's divide through, yeah, whatever, uh, let's divide through by uh, Rg. So we would get pi over Rk, take this over, 1 over uh, pi over Rg, and the Rg here drops down. Okay? Right. So, then we're left with the condition that, so let's rewrite it, saying this is OK, this is over RZ, and this drops out. Okay? Okay. That's the right condition. Right? So let's assume that Z, Z is, greater than, is greater than 0. So this is an equality rather than an inequality. Right? Because if z is greater than 0, here, this becomes an equality. Equality implies z c greater than 0. Right? So let's suppose that's z c greater than 0. It then implies an equality there. Go the other way. So we would have this. Okay? And now we have a result. Now we have a result. And what's the result? Your. The return on consumption mill is for the margin utility of the discounted margin utility on consumption mill is, is equal to children into supporting their parents when they're Yeah. What do we know? That's all true, but I don't know. I mean, that's just restating this condition. So let me let me ask you, maybe my question wasn't clear. I'll put my blame on myself. All right. um, what do you know about... We know that if parents were leaving positive bequests, right? If parents were leaving positive bequests, we know if BC greater than zero, then what we know, we would know that the margin utility parents can get from their own consumption is equal to the margin utility they get by giving their kids a thousand dollars more, right? That's a condition. So, that can't be true. That cannot be true. We just shown that cannot be true. No matter how much you do with z, z, the optimal amount is to stop short of that point. Right? Because why? Because here, I mean, here we have this, and here we have this, and then we have a positive term here. So we know this implies that beta u prime c naught is less than, strictly less than. Drop out the beta strictly less than a v prime c, right? Strictly less than. That's the condition they were trying to correct by creating z in the first place, and they do, but they never go to a point where they're indifferent. <coughs> Why? They cut z c z by a unit and raise k by a unit. Okay? There would be a loss to the parent. So now here we're going to have delta z equal to minus delta k is equal to one. Okay? The parents will lose something because R Z is greater than R K, right? So the parents would would lose basically a whole A times R Z minus RK. <coughs> what are the kids, right? So uh, 
Uh, what do the kids gain? This is loss to parents. Loss to parents. Help is the uh, minus one. Delta Z is minus one, delta K is plus one. So they reducing Z by one unit, raising K by one unit. Right? So the budget constraint means it is, is not directly affected in terms of the direct resource. But since R is this has a bigger return than this, when they come to old age, they lose some resources, the difference between these two things. And the utility value of that loss is this. Forget, I'm forgetting about the beta because we're just comparing things at old age. That's the utility value of that loss. Oh. <clears throat> All right, that's the utility loss. Now what, what are the kids gaining? Well, the kids are gaining oh, V prime C times RZ. Z by one unit, so the kids' co contributions are being reduced by RZ, and then you multiply that times the large utility. So this is the utility gain for the parents, and we multiply that. So that's the gain to the parents from doing that. Okay? So the parents have to compare these two things. Now, if it were true, the question now is, is their loss their loss is this less than equal or greater than a b prime r z. Well, we started from a position where these are equal, like here, when these drop out, and we, as long as rk is positive, we know this thing is going to be smaller than that thing, and they won't do it. And it's not surprising, you know, z is wasteful. I mean, z is fundamentally wasteful. You do it because you, I mean, you have to do it. I mean, you don't have to do it. You do it because, well, it's wasteful, but you're getting so much value in your old age consumption from doing that, that it pays for you to do it. I mean, if you could write a contract with the kids that they agree to do it, that's a much better way of doing it. Okay. So around this, if you were around a fully efficient point at old age, well, then you want, you want to move away from that point. You save resource by moving away from that point. That's, that's the in, intuition behind why that you never go to the full point for those that are saying. Yeah. To me, it, it seems, well, we've, the way we've written it, we've kind of assumed that Z is wasteful. But to me, in real life, it seems like that it might not necessarily be the case. So like, I could imagine, you know, instead of a, ki a child having this indirect utility function, he has a multi-period utility function. And Z, well, this is, this, uh, he does have one. Okay, yeah. or like implicit, I guess. He does implicit have a that he does. Period. But like, you know, Z could raise his utility as a child. So like, Z could be the parent. You know, well, I, just, I gave you an example at the beginning. I said we could have other terms in the utility function. It may be Z makes the kid guilty. That lowers the utility even more than this. You could have it going even more because you have another term, guilt. You raise Z, you raise guilt, and you also start giving more. Or maybe it makes a kid happier. I call that altruism. Okay? So you could have additional terms that could go either way in this. Well, I could see Z, I guess, okay, maybe this isn't that useful of a distinction, but I could see spending on Z itself making the kid happier, where S of Z doesn't still cost him. Well, yeah, that definitely, in both cases, is going to make them worse. But and I, yes, you could spending on Z could make them happy. It could make them more unhappy. You're giving because I see. I, I said I'm not introducing the mechanism by which Z leads to S. Why does Z lead to S? That's the question you're asking, or, or what you should be asking. Why does Z lead to S? Right? That's why does Z lead to S? I just assume it does, and you, therefore the only loss to the kids is just subtracting S of Z from their wealth. But it could be that there's another loss to the kids. Z leads to S because you're making the kid guilty. They lose utility from that. Plus, 
you have S. Or Z maybe has less cost to kids. Maybe it makes kids better off because it makes kids more altruistic, they like, and they want to give more to their parents. So you can't sign that. Uh, it's like saying you have an advertising. I mean, you remember those of you who took 301, uh, which you did, right? So when you're talking about advertising, we say what you want to distinguish with advertising is the first order effect of advertising. Does it raise or lower the utility of the individual? And it could go either way. There could be advertising that lowers your utility, so you rush to turn off the, the ads from the television, or you zap them out with a TiVo or something else like that, right? Or it could be that it raises your, your utility. But the question, the advertiser is worried about the sign of that. But he's <coughs> as much or more worried about what's the effect of the advertising, how much you're consuming of, of oatmeal or Quaker oats or whatever you're talking about, right? And something similar like that one could say. Yes, there's a direct effect of Z on your utility. Could be either sign. But in addition, it has a cross effect on your giving. And I'm only looking, I'm here I'm only looking at the cross effect. The other effect could go either way. And it's an interesting question which way it goes. Of course, the parents would like to make Z in a way that it adds to the kid's utility directly. You'd like to be able to do that because the kid, kid, parents care about kids. But you may not be able to do it. Okay. Now you had a question back there. You can come back, but you would, <laughs> before you, yeah, no, you were asking, you were raising your hand before. Oh no, no, no. No, you weren't. Okay. Now you're just exercising, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. No, I, any, any it, questions? It, yeah. Cool. yeah. Okay. Sorry, I did that. Can I ask one more? Yeah, go ahead. Um, maybe this isn't a useful distinction, but it seems like the the kid also faces a similar constraint problem in that, like, he can't borrow against his future earnings very well. So it seems that, like, by, he may. He may. by giving the kid Z when he's young can allow you to, like, get past that sort of inefficiency of the fact that the kid can't borrow. So, like, well, that, that, well, that, I the way I would interpret that question is, what happens to why? What happens to parental investment in kids when you because when you say the kids can't borrow, the kids can't borrow, the parents have to do the investing for them. We know they can't borrow. There's no way that's going to help them borrow. Okay? So that's not the right way to ask that question. Uh, we know they can't borrow, but maybe, maybe if the parents are engaging in Z, they invest more in their kids. Okay? Maybe. So, first of all, let me ask the following question. Do the parents, as a result of doing this, do they invest now the efficient amount in kids? What is the efficient amount? Okay. The efficient amount is, can I erase this? I'll erase this side. Remember, it's still true that families who are giving positive bequests, they're not going to engage in any of this stuff. They have no incentive to engage in any of it. They may engage in expenditures that make kids happier, change their preference or make them happier. Of course, they may have incentive to do that. But they won't engage in any expenditure that mainly just increases the transfer from kids. That they won't do. And in particular, if the kids are guiltier, for doubly they won't do that. Right? All right. Follow that? Okay. Anybody have any questions about that? Well, Dan will go over it, and Dan and uh, Hayes will go over it tomorrow, some of it. So, uh, you, may, you, may, you may not be able to get all of it right away, some of you, but uh, think about it and it'll go over some of it. Now, what did I say? Well, we know the efficient. In the efficient equilibrium is that ROI star equal to R. Okay. That would be efficiency. Now, what's the first order condition 
for investment in kids? Well, for the human capital. Okay. Well, it would be it would be beta A B prime C R Y, right? That's going to be equal to lambda, right? And we know lambda is equal to beta R K U prime C naught, right? Right? These are all equalities, because we know we we know by the conditions we impose that R star is greater than zero. Remember, you assume the rate of return on Y is so high that you're always going to have some Y. So we have this, and we can just look at this. Well, we can get rid of the betas. And this, and then we have A, B prime C. Uh, we have A, B prime C here. Now, what do we know about A, B prime C compared to U prime naught? A, B prime C is less than U prime C naught. We proved that. That's the condition I was just talking about, why you don't go to that point where you're indifferent between your own consumption at the margin and your kids. Well, now we use that, so we can say this is this. That implies Ry greater than R. Okay? Now, you still, despite doing all of this, you'll never go to the fully efficient point for Y. That we know. Okay. Now, what else can I prove? A couple of results. So what do we have? So far we have we have R star Y greater than RK. RZ greater than RK. Right? We have those two results. Now, what's in equilibrium? The relationship between Ry and Rz. I'm not going to call on you. No. <laughs> Any questions? Might have the answer sometime. <laughs> well, if you have the answer, raise your hand. You, uh, you can give the answer as well as anyone else. Yeah. I thought we said in the in the earlier. Uh, analysis that you the utility the marginal utility at old age would be less than a a v prime c. Yeah, um, yeah, that's true. This should be um, this. Yeah, this no. This is what I had right. This should be greater than this. I'm sorry. This. Yeah, this is greater than this, because you, you would prefer to have more of your own consumption. So if that's greater than this, so if that's greater than this, that means Ry is greater than Rk. So what I had was right. No, that's right. Because before you... you but it has to be, think about it. Think about it. Think about it without saying before. Because the parents are trying... The problem is the parents' marginal utility from all age consumption exceeds the marginal utility they get from their kids. That's the problem. And what we showed is that while creating Z will, will induce more old age consumption and less Z, they never go fully. 
So it must be in equilibrium that the marginal utility the parents get from their own age stuff must be greater than what they get from their kids. That must be true. All right. Now I asked the, the question, how do, what do we know about this? Well, we can grind, do a little more grinding, but anybody know the answer? RC should be higher, right? Because it's higher so than R1. Okay, so R is be greater than R1. Why is that? Because the first one is like a harmful activity towards the kid, right? Yeah. And, well, I mean, like, you can also show it in the math. It is a harmful activity, yeah. Okay. All right, well, let's see what our equations imply. In general, it could go either way. It could go either way. And let me show you why. Um, I've written so much down here, I'm confusing myself a little bit, so let me get this straightened out. Over here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think I'll start with that. Okay. So, do we, if we look at that, we go back. I don't know if I can still have it on the board. I think I should have it someplace. Let's go back up to it. Yeah, we go to this equation. Now it's an strict equality. Right? We're assuming G is positive. Strictly positive. And we know what lambda is. Lambda is, is up there. Lambda is beta A V prime C R Y. Right, so let's rewrite this equation. Beta A V prime C R Y. Okay. Well, the beta A V prime C all cancels out. That's nice. So now what do we have? Okay. We have. Well, what do we have? We we have. Yeah, we have that. That's fine. Um, that's okay. What form do we want to put it in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if we we can rewrite this equation. I guess this. Way. And then take this term to the other side. <coughs> so I divide through by RZ, put it down here, take this term to the other side, that means this is equal to RK over RZ minus RK. Okay? The question is, is, what's the size of this term? What's the size of this term? Well, it depends, you know, if in equilibrium Rz is very close to Rk, if this is very close, this denominator is very small, and so in equilibrium Ry is going to be greater than Rz. So, in other words, if the return on making the kids support you is not that much different than the return on capital, it's higher, it's only higher by a little bit, then in equilibrium, the return on human capital will be greater than that. Right? The left-hand side will be greater than 1. The denominator on the right-hand side of this is very small. Right? You make that very small without changing. Yeah, you can make, the way you make this very small is to make the, hold this constant and make this, move this closer to that. So you're raising this. In principle, you go close to infinity, and that means that this term here will get greater and greater than 1. On the other hand, if Rz is much greater than Rk, then this term will be less than 1. 
So, fuck. I don't think you can sign. I mean, all this shows that you can't sign it. R, Y, radio, people, or less. That you can't uh, say anything about. All right. But we do know, however, we do know the following, the final result. This we, we do know. That as you go from a period of no Z to positive Z, maybe large Z, what are you doing? Well, remember, we start out, the problem is when we start out, The problem when we start out is B is equal to zero, and therefore this is greater than zero. That's when we start with Z equal to zero, right? You're getting more minor utility from yourself. So now you start making Z positive. As you make Z positive, you raise, sorry, you lower this and you raise that. Right? All right. As you make Z positive, you lower the ratio, this ratio of this to this. Now let's come back to the condition for RY. Okay? In my RY in equilibrium, the equilibrium condition for RY will be, okay, let's write the equilibrium condition for RY. Now we can write Ry in equilibrium in that first order condition, Ry star is simply equal to u prime c naught divided by a v prime c. So as you're raising z, we said you're, like, you're lowering this and raising this. So you're lowering this. The only way you can lower this is by increasing y. So we prove that as you go, as you, when you make z greater than zero, r star greater than r star z equals zero. What that's saying is, well, as I'm getting more for myself by harming my kids, then I have more incentive to try to compensate them to some extent by raising my investment in them. Okay. Right? I'm raising the marginal utility of my investment in them relative to the marginal cost of investing in them. And therefore, I want to invest more in them. So that's kind of interesting. That as I engage in this activity, in, in a sense, that, that makes the human capital market work better. We know it's inefficient, and it'll be inefficient in equilibrium. But it's not going to be quite as inefficient as it was without doing it. Now, you're doing that at a cost, and Z is a real cost, to, in, a real cause. <clears throat> the family would prefer they could write a contract between them where the child promises to pay a certain amount, they bargain over that. How much, you know, and who gets the rent, who, how they share the rent. That could make better off. Now, the question I have, and, and think about that for tomorrow. All right, so now we see the effect on children is two different effects. On the one hand, you're raising Z and you're making them worse off, right? Make them worse off. On the other hand, by raising Z, you are raising Y, you make them better off. Are children necessarily worse off as a result of all this? Parents are clearly better off. They wouldn't do it otherwise. Now we know. The question is, could it be Pareto improving? Or is it simply a, some kind of a redistrib redistribution, maybe an efficient redistribution? All right. That will, you know, uh, will depend a lot on the functional form, but 
what I thought of is the following example. In the following example. The rate of return here. the parents before you started Z were around there, somewhere around there. All right. They're not going to increase Y very much because you're doing Z, right? Because the Y rate of return falls to rapidly. So in that case, the increase in Y isn't going to compensate the kid. The kid's going to be worse off. On the other hand, suppose the function looks like this. Depending on why a lot, because you get a big bang at that point. Alright, so is it possible that the kid could uh, come back? Would that make it possible for the kid actually to be better? I think so, but I haven't proven it. Alright, so think about it for tomorrow. Maybe then you think about it and see. I'm not sure. I think it's possible. Um, but, you know, all this, a lot of the shapes these functions take into account in the maximization by the parent to start with. That's what you have to worry about a little bit. Okay. All right, any questions? I'll, uh, otherwise, I'll shift to something else. So, so, you might say, what's the point of all this? Well, the point of it is a couple of points. We endogenize preferences. And we show by endogenizing preferences, parents can partly correct that missing market as far as they're concerned in terms of old age. Okay? And then we can establish, but the children will also, in one dimension at least, benefit. They'll be more invested in them. At least in, the, in this straight, simple model, we can prove it. We prove that. They'll be more invested in them. So in that sense, that's good for the kids. You're making that market work better. You're making a human capital market work better. There's no question about that. Um, on the other hand, you're doing it at a cost, right? You'd prefer to have the human capital market make better. Well, you don't have to spend Z. Z are real resources. You're always better off. It's a good thing to know in economics. You're always better off if you can do it in form of transfers rather than in terms of real expenditure. Right? Every time you have to do it in form, that's why pricing is such a good system. Pricing is like transfers. Well, you pay me, I get, you lose, yes. But if you have to spend time waiting online for my goods, what well, you're paying, I'm not getting. So I try to avoid that, and you, you'll be happy to avoid that too, at the, at, if, at the right situation. Okay. So you always prefer uh, to do it in the form of transfer. Trouble with Z is you, you, you can, and the reason you use Z is because you don't have that market available to you to write the contract with your kids. Right? So you try to overcome it in a different way. You don't fully overcome it, it's not as good as the other. Uh, the other, you go to a fully efficient outcome, fully efficient Why We know you don't go that way here. But it, nevertheless, it, it may be uh, worthwhile to do it. Okay. And it may be, and it may be even credo improving. I say, that's a maybe. We haven't shown that. All the other stuff we've shown in this model, and everything works out pretty clearly, all the other stuff. Are you raising your hand now, or are you just exercising? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm raising my hand. Okay. Um, I, I was just wondering um, whether or not it's a credit improvement um, if you allow um, parents to to spend Z. Um, well, that that'll increase um, the children's incomes, right? 
So if you're what do you mean spend to? What? What do you mean by spend? I, I mean if you if if um now that we you know we've added this possibility that parents can change their children's preferences through some expenditures, um that it seems like that should decrease the um or raise raise children's incomes, right? Because you're spending you can then spend more on why. Well, um, yeah, but the I mean, it rent, raise their income may lower their utility. Right, exactly. Um, so if you were just trying to look at like inequality statistics based on income, this would this would make society look more equal, right? Oh, well, yeah, it depends. I mean, you're looking at those statistics. You know, parents will invest more on their kids now, but this is and this will be true more at the lower end. I think that's right. a good point you're raising. Right. Parents will invest more on their kids at the lower end. Because the higher end, they're already investing the optimal amount. So the lower end, they'll invest more in the kids. So if you look at the earnings, absolutely right. Um, if you look at the, the intergenerational transmission of human capital, that coefficient will be higher. Right? That'll be higher overall, right? Because you're improving it at the lower end, and therefore you're improving the distribution at, at the lower end. Now, with those statistics fail, uh, so I'm glad you raised this point, good point. What those statistics fail to take into account is that the kids are giving, they're supporting their parents in old age. Now, usually they say, well, that's a free activity, you know, kids are doing that. We're trying to try to go behind that and say that isn't, in general, a free activity. Uh, and I took a simple version that it's created through the parental preference process and to really look at the real income of the kids and of the parents you have to take into account how, where that's coming from yeah good point but if you just look at the earnings you're absolutely right okay now it doesn't make it a fully efficient market so still at the low end they're not going to be making the optimal investment in their kids that result survives this but not as, it won't be as extreme as in the absence of this process. Okay? Any other questions before I shift? I'm going to move to the more traditional human capital problem, which is more traditional human capital investment problem, which is you have an adult, they decide how much education or other human capital they should get. Okay? I mean, that's the traditional human capital problem. That's where the human capital analysis began from, really. Um, and it's still a very important part of the problem. So maybe up until age through high school or through college, um, you have parents deciding. But at some point, the kids take over decision-making. Given whatever preferences the parents have instilled in them in biology and the like, they take over decision the ability of the kids that affect the parental investment will also affect kids' investment. And we'll bring that in. So now we want to look at investment by young adults. Of course, why the young adults? We, well, that will be a theorem, but let's the moment assume they're young adults. Okay. The takers given, once they're young adults, whatever their parents did to them, blame them for whatever you want. You're stuck with whatever they did to you. Okay. So maybe that's why it's such a free game to blame your parents for everything, right? <laughs> you can't do anything about it. It's cheap talk. Uh, really, really. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you blame. But whatever they've done, good or bad, you have a certain amount of human capital. Now let's assume you start with a certain amount of human capital. moment, I'll just say that's in the background, okay? Now they want to decide, let's say they finished high school. I'm just using that as uh, a metaphor for some initial level of education. Let's say they finished high school, they, they have to decide it's a one, zero, one decision to go to college or not. That's their decision. If they go to college, they have to invest, and we'll go into that a certain amount during the first year when, after they complete high school. And if they don't, they go to work in the first year. Okay? The 
simple question is, do they decide to go to college or not? After finishing this story. I'll assume there are known life expectancy, although we'll get a little bit, we will get into this issue later on where life itself is unknown and maybe you can influence that unknown variable. In fact, we will go into that analysis. But for now, I'm going to assume that everybody who stopped making this decision lives n plus one years. During year zero, so I'm, so life runs from 0, 1, up until M. <coughs> During year 0, invest or not, and for the rest of the M years, you collect a certain return on your investment. And make it simple. I'm only starting out. I'm going to make it very simple. So that all people were, all that the decision maker worries about are the earnings they're going to get in different periods. And once we go through that, we'll generalize that to utility and we'll bring in some other variables once we do that. But a lot of the important aspects come out of this analysis. Okay. okay. So we can now say a certain amount of earnings, you went to high school, earnings I, I runs from zero to N, okay? That's your high school earnings. And you go to college, you'll get a certain amount of earnings, E, C, I, I runs from zero to N. And if you go to college, College, you have tuition equal to F, equals tuition. So if you, that's in, in this initial period. One of your costs of going to college is your tuition. That tuition could be negative. Maybe you're giving a big scholarship, fellowship. So it could be negative. And so they're only worried about earnings. And so then it's easy. They choose C or, or H. These are two earning streams, right? You get an earning stream if you go to college and a different earning stream if you stop after high school and, and start earning. And you look at the discounted value of these earning streams. And you choose the value, discounted value that's greater. Okay, so we'll generalize that, as I said. But um, well, now what we're going to assume is you have R is equal 1 over 1 plus R. It's actually a discount rate. We'll call that the value of college. Let's call that first the value of high school. This is the sum E pi 0. R I, I running from 0 to M, right? So when the first period is not discounted. And then V college, sum <coughs> V I college, R I minus M. Those are your two streams. And then go to college. Simple enough. Okay.
Okay, so we look at VC minus VH. That's going to be equal to what? I'm going to write it this way. It's going to be a sum. E IC minus E I H and R I I run from one to M M so that's and then we're going to have some E zero C minus E zero H minus F. Okay? And you go to college or not as that's whole. Okay. <coughs> so we can bring this over to the other side. And let's write it this way. This is a criteria. Okay. What does that say? Well, these are the benefits, discounted benefits from going to college. College earnings. After you finish college, how much more are you earning in high school? Maybe some years that's negative. Okay. Presumably. Uh, there's a cost to going to college, so that the benefits were present about negative, you wouldn't go. So on the whole, that's going to be positive. And this is the cost. What is the cost? Well, tuition, fees, and here, foregone earnings. How much less earnings do you have by going to college? Now, that's an important part, as we'll emphasize later on. So you're in the classroom now, you're not earning as much as you would otherwise. Okay. And how much you would have earned otherwise makes a difference. So for example, during the recession, you find applications increase to universities and business schools. Kind of a little surprising. You want to invest more in human capital when times are bad. You look at physical capital, just the opposite. So we'll have to try to understand why that difference. Okay? So I'm going to call this the cost equals okay? and the cost is foregone earnings and tuition over here and the benefits. So you compare benefits and costs. Very simple problem. Um, and nothing uh, complicated. Now we can break that down a little bit. Make that okay. Let me do it over here. Easier. Let's say there are T hours of work. And that's the same for all for every year, for both high school and college, except when you're in college. Okay. So then we can say E I college is equal W I college times T E I high school equals W I high school times T. So I run from 1 to M, okay? And we'll assume E0 high school equals W0 high school times T. E0 college equals W zero high school times T minus TC. 
So I'm assuming his high school, his college. He spent some time at college. So TC, TC, time at college. So you have T minus TC left over, and you earn the hourly rate you earn is the same as high school graduates. So your foregone earnings per hour is what you could have gotten if you didn't go to high college. Not an unreasonable assumption, right? I mean, you get what you could have, because you don't have any more human capital than you had before then. That's what we're assuming. Okay. So now we can write the problem. VC greater than V8 as sum T times delta WI, I running from 1 to M, is greater than value of a dollar for m years, right? What should that be? That's like 1 r to the m, is it? It's greater than equal to less than pc make that simplification if you don't, if you assume the earnings come different in different years. The main point I want to make is simply that whether looked at it in, in this way, if we look at it here, what are the parameters we have? This is what we'll discuss next time. We have the gain, earnings gain, clearly important, right? How much you gain from going to college? We have the discount rate. We have hours worked. We have the time spent in college, or your foregone earnings, and we have the tuition. So we have, and we have life expectancy. So we have here delta W T R M T C. Those are six, six parameters, six variables, right? They're not parameters because like hours of work you choose, your life expectancy you may choose, this may be chosen, etc. But six variables. Each of them have a, a significant influence and a known influence that we can interpret in a reasonable way 
on whether you, the, the choice of going to college. So uh, time is run, run out now, so let's continue with that next time.